Kamigawa Neon Dynasty products are available for pre-order now at CoolStuffInc.com. Use the promo code CGB5 and you'll get a 5% discount on your order and a sweet Covert Go Blue Wolf token for free. Pre-order now at CoolStuffInc.com. Cool stuff in stock. Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today is the second day in the battle for the channel. At the time I'm recording this, I have no idea how the green-white decks went, what got more views, what got more thumbs up, what got more comments, alchemy or standard. Today is the second day of that battle and both decks will be playing Esper Hollowed Haunting Control. Yeah, I have not I have not played with Hollowed Haunting before I started making these videos. And that will become apparent because I really have to think through my plays. Here in the standard version, we are going to be rocking the Fabled Enchantment. Let me read it to you for those of you who may not have crafted this mythic. As long as you control seven or more enchantments, creatures you control have flying and vigilance. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, create a white spirit cleric token. With this creature's power and toughness are equal to the number of spirits you control. So, basically, every enchantment now comes with a 1-1 spirit token that makes the other tokens get bigger, and then they become 2-2s, two and then they become 3-3s. Three and if you have seven or more enchantments, they're flying vigilant as well. So, as you absorb the deck list, you'll see that we have a lot of of enchantments. Doomscar is in fact the only non-enchantment non-land card. Doomscar is important because we don't want to die, so it makes a lot of sense to play a full-on sweeper, but it's actually a little misleading. We actually have seven sweepers in the deck. There are three meat hook massacres and four doomscars, so there's a lot of ways to clear the board and keep from dying. This actually plays like a tap-out control deck with no counter spells. It's pretty crazy. <clears throat> voice stuff. Maybe this two videos a day is going to be uh, going to be hard on the old esophagus or larynx or, you know, the biologist will tell me how wrong I am about that. It's fine. And then the rest of the deck being enchantments means we need a whole bunch of enchantments that interact with our opponent and produce value. So we've got circle of confinement. You see how that interacts with creatures, especially good on old growth trolls and werewolves and stuff. We got borrowed time. Actually, it's even better on vampires because if the opponent actually casts a vampire spell, <laughs> we'll see if that ever happens, ever. Anyway, borrowed time. This one can hit anything like planeswalkers, artifacts, enchantments, just can't hit lands. So borrowed time's a really good inclusion as well. Wedding announcement is just so much value and it creates more of those small creatures and it anthems so it makes our spirit clerics when we start running with Hollowed Haunting even bigger. It can also draw cards. Raven's Warning lets us access our sideboard in best of one. So I've got a wish board full of cards that might be really good in specific matchups. So Raven's Warning helps you get those. Test of Talents for or the mill and combo matchups. Faithbound Judge for like mono black is probably where this is best. Katilda the Dawnheart, ri the Rising Dawn. Katilda's Rising Dawn. Katilda Dawnheart Martyr. Anyway, big flying lifelinker that you can fetch up in the matchups where that could be. Maybe it doesn't just die to a Doom Blade, you know? Minimus Containment solves just about anything while being an enchantment. Go blank, clears out graveyard. Seagate Restoration draws cards or lets you hit a land drop if that's what's crucial. And the fourth Meat Oak Massacre to sweep the board as an enchantment. And then we also have Lithoform Blight, which is a weird one. It can help fix our mana, but it nerfs creature lands, which are actually a significant problem for this deck that isn't usually a problem because all of our stuff is sorcery speed. So having ways to nuke creature lands is very important. Then we've got in the class section, one paladin class, four wizard class, and three warlock class. That's because we need some cheap enchantments to fill out the curve. These get a little bit of card advantage and have some interesting effects on the game, but for, for the most part, we just really need some one mana plays because there's a lot of times where you drop the hollowed haunting and then the next turn, what you need to do to stay alive is drop a D's card like borrowed time or wedding announcement and another class so that you make at least two creatures to do some blocking. Okay, now that I've introduced that, 
uh, pretty much explains the deck, play Hollowed Haunting, play a bunch of enchantments, and the rest of the time play it like a control deck. I'm anticipating interesting matchups with creatures in mid-range. I have no idea what's going to happen if I have to play this against control, but it's probably going to go very poorly. So those are my takes on what the deck's good matchups and how it's going to go. Now we're going to dive in and we're going to let the Hollowed Haunting nonsense begin. This hand has, well, it has black or white mana, and it has confounding and class, and it has two borrowed times for interaction. And I didn't hit apply styles, or I have never bought cosmetics for any of these cards, and I find either one unacceptable. <laughs> What's with all these normie cards? Can I mulligan into more cosmetics? Is that, is that, that's some serious streamer privilege, isn't it? That's, that's detestable. Whale noises. <laughs> Clerics, man. We're doing life gain now in standard? Big decision, black or white? Black or white? I think with two confounding conundrums, we can choose white. Because we're we might need to cast this borrowed time right on time. Okay. The field, the field. Field confounding conundrum can get him. Did you guys know that? I mean, they need to play it on basic, but it can get them. Black mana, sweet, perfect. Now we just need to find some Hollowed Haunting, but let's try to keep them from killing us too quickly. Good. Just... Okay, good. This is what we want. Bunch of little 1-1 one -one dorks versus Doomscar. <laughs> um... Do you want to do the thing? You want to get him? Nah, I don't think it's worth it to try to get him here, to be honest. I really don't think it's worth it. To, to like, feel to ruin their overgrown farmland on their turn and get him with Confounding Conundrum. If this is out, do they have to return two lands? Poggies? And a Haunting? I think I'm gonna foretell Doomscar. I did not know we were a land denial deck. Our true nature was hidden from all. We need a second white anyway for the Doomscar. So now we can set up Field of Ruin, bounce two lands. They have to play a land though. If they don't play a land, it won't trigger. So it would be nice if they flooded out. So many dorks. This is it. We're gonna say go. We're just gonna say go. It's gonna look sus because we have this. Then the opponent's gonna play land, and then we're gonna field of ruin them. We're gonna double stone rain them, then we're gonna play Hallowed Haunting or Doomscar. It's gonna be great. That's how these cards work, right? I think it is. Whenever land enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, if that player play another land. Okay. Okay. That's not good because the Ullenbrock Escort will protect it. If they put the counter on itself, maybe they'll put the counter somewhere else. Good. Okay. They didn't play a land either. Boo. Lame. But we still need the white. Man. Man. You know what I'd like? A Meat Hook Massacre would be nice. We drew the white anyway. Troll. I'm getting trolled by the deck. Okay. Do we blow this up? The escort can save the veteran and they'll replay these two, but I guess we're at 10 and we need to start thinking about that. Let's do this first. Draw a card. Now they have to pay life. Daggone it. If they want to have green mana. Another field of ruin. We can put off our decision on the blue mana.
I wonder if I should have saved the two mana enchantment to play with Hallowed Haunting next turn. We'll see. We'll see what we draw. I might actually end up borrowing this veteran. We can always haunt the battlefield later. I don't know if I'm playing any of this right. These flying things might be a pain, and I do need the flyers, so I need to draw into more enchantments. But this gives my creatures flying, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Uh, you got me. They were itching to play that Brutal Cathar for value, weren't they? They were not gonna play that on an empty board. Should have played blue there. How did Covert not go blue? Pathetic. But here we go. Hallowed Haunting. All our creatures have flying and vigilance because we have seven enchantments and every enchantment we play is going to make another creature and they're going to get bigger the more we play and our opponent just drew an important card. Voice of the Blessed. And they're swinging. Swinging. I guess when a creature leaves the battlefield, this grows, huh? Is that good reason? To take two more? I think so. Block with a human. Save the spirit. We need more enchantments to make these bigger. It's blue-white control. It's just tap out blue-white control. We just gotta play like a control deck, I think. We've got the drawing from Wizards class on tap here. And we get the buffed Wizards class in Alchemy. Poggies. That's, that, that'll be fun. Okay, Jude. Good draws do good things. Alright, don't draw land. That's, that's what I'm learning right here. Don't draw land. Okay. Interesting spot, for sure. We've got an Anthem effect now. We'll get another one next turn. But low on cards. We could flood out. It would be sad. Our opponents back-to-back -back Brutal Cathard us, and they drew the best card in their deck. But they can't really engage with this card if it's going to die in combat. But we can't take any damage. I guess we have to kill it. That's going to make this a 4-4. Definitely give up a human, not a spirit, though. The spirits pump each other. This draw step's huge. This draw step needs to hit. Not bad. Not bad. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> are you going to be popping off? Vigilant. Yo. Ganging. Okay. So those will trigger and make the voice big. No, it won't. They exile, right? Oh, no, it is when they leave. Never mind. It's not when they die. It's when they leave. Draw. Let's go to the smaller one. In case they draw another Brutal Cathar or Double Spell, but that's a nice card to draw. Dude. Does this mean they have Valorous Stance? We need If they have it, we need to get it out of them, or it will survive the Doom Scar and destroy us. Everybody in front. Team effort. Jump them. Dude! <laughs> Hollowed frickin' haunting! And holy, of course, here every day. I always forget 
to give him all the credit he actually deserves. He's here every day. He works on the graphics, uh, all, all kinds of graphics for the stream and the YouTube videos. Part of making Team CGB happen, and Adamant MTG, the voice of our... <laughs> the voice of, I guess, the voice that calls me back to the dojo in the Kamigawa video. Voice actor. You guys, like, all just hang out here in the meantime. That's so cool. Let's try to draw land. If we foretell Doomscar, it's okay. But against black, it's not important. Whereas drawing land, it's going to be very important. I would like to announce my nuptials. Or, foretell the Doom Scar, don't play this until after the haunting. I think I'll draw more cards if I play this after. And I don't think Black is going to do anything about this. I think Black is going to get clowned. Hmm. That's a case where playing on curve I think would be a mistake. We'll see. Our opponent might have turn 3 lulth, lol. Easy. Haha, -ha, magic fun. I pass priority to myself. <laughs> and lol! All right, so they have the best draw they could possibly have. Let's see how this turns out. My power is for annihilation. Man, all these three drops is gonna get clunky in here. Gonna get so clunky. We might just get beaten to death. Okay, if we draw another land next turn, we're we're like on the move. It's very important. Hopefully they don't just lolth us again. If they do, we're gonna have to Doomscar, but maybe we draw land and go borrowed time plus lolth. But yeah, we may as well get rid of this, because if we Doomscar now, they just make more spiders. For no cost, you know? They just minus lolth. And then they still have their mana to do other stuff on their turn. That's a very aggressive play. Seven life. Seven life. I guess we Doomscar. Make them at least try to rebuild a board. And then try to make our own creatures. Really needed a land there. Really needed it. But next turn should be good too. They're not going to kill us this turn. They still have three turns of Hive, if that's what they choose to do. And they have a full grip too. It's going to be tough. Just dirtle opponent, don't worry. No need to no need to do that. Don't did we don't need that. Let the form blight off the top. Please? Field of Ruin? We've got actually more solutions to creature lands than average. Okay, we go to one. <laughs> no, wait, we don't. We make two creatures. That's right, Hollowed Haunting. Hollowed Haunting wedding announcement, two creatures. They can't power up the hive and get through. Convenient. Envy the straw. For they I will cull the wheat. Very convenient. I think we can block them all, though. We can make so many creatures. But if we attack with two, we don't make creatures, we draw. I kind of want to draw. But then we still have this hive, so I kind of need creatures. What you got? What you got? Okay. Merely delayed, not defeated. Kaboom! All right, we might end up going to one here, guys, because these are gonna draw. You gain two life. Doesn't stop the Hive. Still haven't drawn a way to get rid of the Hive. We have so many ways to battle the Hive. We haven't drawn it!
Uh-huh. Now we're missing a land. Pretty crucial one, too. We're gonna make two one ones on end step this turn. That should be enough to get in the way of the hive. Good game. Okay. I go to one. Oh, make sure you say it twice. Double the ass. Okay. Good for them. Doomshgar. Puppers? Mono white? <laughs> Doomscar, you've got to be good. Uh, opponent? Just when you thought early good games were at their peak. I think we gotta do it. I think we take too much damage if we don't. I mean, they portable hold for nothing. Seems very likely they know exactly who they're playing against. Probably watching us right now. They found the Sun Gold Sentinel button. Still stuck on land, though. It's like Shark Typhoon, you just slam it. Not good. Not good! But, they didn't remove the Hollowed Haunting. Fight for the board, or get set up for absolute domination, and take a million damage. I'm not down with that. They might get this Adeline back, though. All they need is a Skyclave Apparition. But if they had that, they probably would have taken out the Hollowed Haunting. We gotta draw more enchantments. Lands would be bad. Enchantments that draw more enchantments would be good. We are a ways away from having the flyers, so this is not good. Opponent decided to throw that 1-1 one, one into hell itself. Good for them. Good draw. Good, good draw. I think we play that. Play it like a control deck. Yeah. Nice. Next turn is looking like it might actually be a double... Never mind, it's not a double spell turn at this time. <laughs> Elite Spellbinder. I pay. Seems good. Finish him. That's 13 damage. I don't know. I don't know. What a good game we had. Uh, uh, yes? Do I blight my own thing to fix my mana issues? Now I don't have to. Pro gamer coming through. Red and green stuff. Dude. What? Yeah, you, you know you're just you're not you're giving up another card to do that, right? 
All right, your your braid is exiled. Okay. That's enough land. We, yes, ugh, it's a lot of land. That's not good. That is not good at all. Interesting. Interesting. If we play the Raven's Warning, they'll have something to target. But if they don't kill it next turn, they get hit by it, and then we draw. But I guess next turn we can foretell the Doomscar and play a Conundrum. And the idea there is we're going to have to Doomscar Goldspan Dragon. And if they have a Counterspell, we lose anyway. This probably gets Test of Talents no matter what. So we do this. They did have another expressive. They just burned one to burn one. Okay. And that sometimes you have two expressives and it's the right play. I don't usually do that unless I'm under pressure. Tapped land would be nice. If they now they have to pay one life for their fading hope. Haha. -ha. I'll show them. Dude, we're getting so we're getting so flooded. It's not it's not fine. It's not fine. I don't think this game is going to be close. We just can't can't draw a useful card. Just not a game of magic. Borrowed time's a fighter. Okay, they're not going to gold span or flip their egg this turn. Maybe there's a chance. So what do they foretell now? Saw it coming? Yeah, saw it coming. May we draw it? They're not going to deluge this turn. If I say go, they might try to deluge on their turn to flip the egg and protect it with saw it coming. If I test of talents it, they counter it, they attack for four, they get a memory deluge, then we untap and blow up the egg. But they have to use their mana a little more awkwardly and they play the tap land, they might not have the untapped land. So I think we just don't give them the opportunity. Also, double conundrum might get him. It might get him. Yes. This could be interesting. They have to. They, you know, they're trying to hit this land drop off their third expressive iteration anyway. Island. End step or now? They already played their land. Kind of awkward for them to do something now. What you got? I guess I should have done it after attacks because now they do that in response and they get to attack me and it's kind of gross. That wasn't great. That was a bad choice. I forgot that I'd just end up taking four. They get their spike field hazard and their haul the storm giants back though. It's kind of a uh, kind of funny. But still, like look at them. Is it does not care. This deck is way too good. Way too good for that stuff. Oh, Jesus. Our draw is so bad, too. It's cool that we did the thing, but we've lost this game. It's not close. Yeah, 
that's ugly. But we did set them back a bit. The treasures are gone. Maybe we draw more Field of Ruins and they never have the mana for their Hullbreaker Horror, huh? Eh? And maybe we draw all good cards from here on. Maybe we draw a whole bunch of cards that draw other cards. I feel like this deck needs all the wizard classes. It just runs out of... Like, I've flooded out, I feel like, all the time. Oh, nice top deck. Best possible draw in their deck, I think. Best draw they could possibly have. I'm out. I'm out. I want nothing to do with it anymore. They had another saw it coming, of course. <laughs> and we are back for the post-games wrap, and... We're going to experiment today with looking at the win rate for this deck, but not looking at the win rate for its counterpart in the other format as the panel for the channel continues. Remember to like, leave comments, and of course, the most important thing in all of it is watch the format you want to watch in the future. Watch the format you want, and if you like both, watch both. That's fine too. Uh, just more CGB for you guys. Anyway, uh, we're going to experiment here with not sharing the alchemy results so that the people who do watch both are not spoiled because some people get really allergic to that. And if somebody wants to post in the comments how the alchemy deck did and you guys can have it out there, uh, go for it. Anyway, this is a 4-3 and three performance from our standard version at a 57% win rate. Honestly, if you told me I was going to play an enchantment-covered pillow fort of a deck like Hollowed Haunting, uh, I would expect it to be a serious, like, like just fighting, fighting for that 50% thing. So I'll take a 4-3. I'll, I'll take a 4-3 and three any day running this deck. And it was a good amount of fun. It reminded me of uh, <clears throat> several decks I used to brew back in the day, trying to make work, tap out Esper control decks, enchantment based decks. And I think it probably deserves more play than it has, but this is definitely for a certain type of gamer. If you love the kind of value off of enchantments archetype which does have a certain appeal think dance of the man's doom foretold then maybe this will kind of bring back some of that excitement for you because i think it's a pretty good deck and it's will it get you to mythic enough dedication devotion who knows maybe an absolute master can get you to mythic so someone out there is saying challenge accepted let me know in the comments when you get there and uh yep deck's cool enjoy it Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. You're cool.